So you might notice we're doing something a little different here. I'm gonna be a lot more candid on the channel. I kind, I'm kind of, I'm kind of sick of like the YouTube voice, right? I gotta be myself on this. So, so here's the thing: there are many of you all out there who want to start publishing companies, and I'm not talking about the artists who just want to start their own publishing company. I'm talking about people who want to sign people. You're gonna face a couple obstacles. I'm gonna give you three of mine that I had to face when I started mine, right? And I'm still going through my phases, right? I got some some clients sign according to that last video you saw on my channel but here are three obstacles that you're gonna face when you're starting your publishing company it's not gonna be easy but you can get through this thing all right and at least you can learn from me what I've been through and maybe you all can throw some comments down below but I just wanted to say this is the music money makeover show Hey everybody, welcome back to the Music Money Makeover Show. We are doing things a little bit differently here and I think that I really like this relaxed type of uh, talking environment um, for you guys. So I think that we can get a lot more information covered in my talks more than me scripting a lot of things. So I wanna switch a lot of stuff up. I'm always changing, all right? So let's go ahead and jump into these obstacles that I faced when I had to start this music publishing business. Uh, when I decided to start my music publishing business. These are three of the biggest obstacles that I faced. Check it out. When I first started the accounts, right, I, I thought, and this was years ago, I thought that BMI would be the only thing that you would need and you would be good. You just had, had to have a BMI account and a BMI publisher's account and you could sign a writer or anybody you wanted to sign and you'd be good. You know, push, come and shove, we know this now, right? Of course, you all know this through my channel, but I didn't know that then. So the next thing I did was I signed up for ASCAP. I got an ASCAP publisher's account and we were all good. I was able to sign any writer that I wanted to, but I didn't realize that I was still missing royalties because see now at this point, I was only collecting mechanical royalties. So now I'm not necessarily running a full-fledged publishing company. I still have money on the table that I have to get, that I have to collect. Well, how am I gonna get this? Well, I read Ari Hershan's book. He was talking about mechanical royalties and he mentioned the Harry Fox agency and he is the inspiration why you all have my book, The 60 Day Label, and why I wrote it is because he said that he believes that every artist should be able to collect their own publishing just as I do, but there are instances as you get bigger where you want somebody else to do this for you, okay? But he stated in his book that you could do this on a Saturday afternoon, which is the truth. You can do this on your own on a Saturday afternoon. And he gave me the hint that the Harry Fox agency was collecting mechanical royalties. So therefore, I now had three accounts that I had to have. The ASCAP Publishers account, the BMI Publishers account, and the Harry Fox account. Okay, And then, of course, from there, you all know, uh, if you have my free version of the 60-day label, you know that, you know, of course, there's music reports. And then of course there is the MLC domestically. That is something new that came into play. Now, once I had all those accounts, I was ready to sign some artists, but then I ran into another obstacle because it was like, okay, Casey, you had been through all these changes with your publishing company. Now, what are we going to do here? What am I going to do when I sign this artist? And this is a key decision. When you uh, decide to sign an artist, you have to state what it is you're going to do in your publishing deal. Now, either you're going to be a collector, which is me for the clients that I have. Either you're going to be an administrator, meaning that you're going to not only collect and administer royalties, but what you're also going to do is for a bigger fee, you're going to also exploit. All right. And then you have the co-publishing and the co-publisher can be two different things. They can be your administrator or they could choose not to be. OK. Now me, I chose the position of collecting and dispersing funds and I take a percentage off of the top. Just like my very, me, I'm a song trust. That's what I am, okay? I'm not nearly as big as song trust, but that's what I decided to do for the percentage I was gonna take. And I took that position because I realized that if I put myself on the hook for having to exploit the artist's works then I it will put more work on my shoulders. And, and I got more videos coming on, you know, starting your own publishing company to sign people. But, but that was one of the things. I didn't want to put so much work on my shoulders that I couldn't actually run the company before I could hire employees, okay? So now, therefore, I figured out what I wanted to do. Then the next step was going to be, well, how are you going to pay them? I guess I, it's just going to come to my, my account and I'm gonna pay them out from my account, right? It makes sense, like they would send me the royalties and I would be good. I just, you know, take my cut and they get theirs. What? Bro, what are you talking about, man? 
Little did I know that just like BMI, they would send me a statement with the breakdown of everything that I'm collecting for in one statement. That meant that there were Excel spreadsheets that were coming along with it, and therefore there would have to be software or royalty collection software that I would have to use in order to break this apart. Oh, hell no. Now for you all, you may know DistroKid is having this software in, in its system. You may know United Masters for having this software in the system. But the difference is United Masters and DistroKid only takes care of the master royalties, okay, from the sound recording. Has nothing to do with publishing, not one bit, right? Well, who do you go to at this point? And that is when the problem kicks in. So I signed everybody. I, I said, I'm going to get, this is my cut. This is what I'm going to do for you. The money comes in, how you pay them? You got to have royalty administration software, and that ain't cheap. You know what I mean? It's not cheap. And you can get those for around, starting at $130 a month to $150 a month, all right, to run your publishing company. And I quickly realized that while this music business is expensive, publishing is expensive, and this is gonna cost a pretty penny just to get started before your artists or your signees even make any money. So, if you're planning on signing people to a publishing company or a record label, you better be sure that they are gonna be worth some value to you before you get started. So these are the three things that, you know, that I ran into when I started when I was starting my publishing company or in the process of still starting because this is an ongoing process so I want you all to see that you know this I'm not just online talking I'm not just a talking head like this is really real you know what I mean but I just wanted to say that anyway if you're looking to start a record label but especially a publishing company you got to take all this stuff into account there's way more things that I've been through starting this company than just those three things. But I wanted to give you those three tips. All right, y'all? If you make music, you should make money. Follow for more music business tips. I'll see you next time. Peace.